Hello once again. Today we will discuss the uh, problem solving for series parallel RL, RC, and RLC series circuits. Series or parallel circuits. Uh, before I do that, again, if you want to, to have the questions uh, here, uh, what we all discuss in this uh, uh, slide or module, just uh, click the description uh, link on this video and then you will be transferred to a Google Drive or a uh, Mapua Drive wherein the questions are there for the main and supplementary problems for you to practice. And please to remember that practice makes perfect. And before you go to uh, the calculation part, I require you to, uh, to uh, see the uh, or revisit the module or uh, the lesson on the fundamentals for series parallel RL, RC, and RLC. Okay, before we uh, solve the problem, we need to read the problem first again. Okay, this is the problem. A series RLC circuit has a resistance of R equal to 8.66, L is equal to 0 0.1062 Henry, and C is equal to 75.8 microfarads. Find the power factor of the circuit if the frequency is 60 hertz. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, solution of the problem. So, for this, we have a series RLC. So, this is the circuit. R, L, and C are in series. And they have the values 8.66.1062 and 75.8 mic microfarad respectively, uh, which is ejected with a frequency of 60 hertz. So what you will do first is you need to convert in terms of the ohmic value, the L and C respectively. So let us recall some things from our last module or last lesson that impedance is equal to R plus the J parameter XL minus XE. Please take note, XL and XE here are um, magnitudes only. Okay, now... For this, you have your XL, 2 pi FL, and then your XC is 1 all over 2 pi FC. But for a frequency of 60, the omega is 377 radian per second, or omega, as we have discussed, is 2 pi F. So, just substitute all of the parameters here and all of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the converted uh, frequency domain parameters in terms of ohmic condition for reactive inductance and reactive capacitance. So, you have uh, inductive uh, inductive uh, or inductance and capacitance here. So, J is equal to 8.66 plus J, 377 multiplied by 0 0.1062. And then you subtract, I rather, there's no J here. You already have the subtract here of 1 all over XC, the capacitive reactance, the inductive reactance. Okay, for uh, for that. Okay, if you uh, uh, compute it using your calculators, it will have this value for the impedance of 8.66 plus J5 or equal to 10 bar 30. And please take note. Okay, the 10 bar 30 here. The 10 bar 30 here, it means this is the phasor value. And this is the uh, the value of in terms of uh, a complex, which is your R and your total X. Okay, the power factor can be solved from the bar angle of the phasor. Okay, so power factor is cosine of the 30 degree angle. And you have here 0.866. And since this is positive, it means lagging condition. And please take note, if this is negative, okay, this is leading. And if this is positive 30, it is lagging condition. Or simply, in other words, in terms of the angle, positive means lagging and minus means leading. This is for the impedance A. And they are the same also if you're considering power which is in terms of S, it has also have its angle theta. 
Okay, we will solve problem number two on the next slide. Okay, let us continue on problem number two. So, the prob uh, this problem is correlated to problem number one. So, just to establish the fundamentals. And this is a former board problem. A circuit containing a resistance of 60 ohms, 60 ohms L or inductance, uh, inductance as 250 millihenry and capacitance 1.1 uh, microfarad are connected in series to a 220 volt 300 hertz supply. What will be the impedance of this circuit? So the answers must be in terms of complex uh, notation. So again, the same thing. We have the frequency instead of uh, 60 hertz. The frequency is uh, 300 hertz based on the problem. And then we must, uh, we will make use of these equations again. And uh, instead of uh, 60 hertz, we use 300 hertz for the problem here. Okay, uh, one, uh, uh, another thing, if the frequency is 50, you can have this assumption that your omega is approximately uh, 314 radian per second. So these are constant actually, considering different frequencies, F uh, 50 hertz rather. Okay, just substitute all of the parameters that we have. So XL uh, R is 60 hertz, uh, 60 ohms rather. XL is 2 pi times 300 times 250 milli. You have 471.24 ohms. XC is 1 all over 2 pi 300 times 1.1 times the negative 6. The answer is 482.27. Substitute all of these values okay, in this equation for impedance. And then, by using your calculator, the answer is 60 minus J11.05 ohms. So, a very, very uh, simple problem for a board problem. Okay, let us continue our problem solving. And we are in another interesting, an interesting problem here, which considers the solution in terms of a phasor diagram that we have discussed in the last lesson. Okay, this is the problem. Yeah, do you have two sinusoidal voltages of having maximum values of 120 volt and 80 volt respectively, but they differ in terms of the angle displacement of 40 degrees are induced at the same branch of the circuit. Now, what is the maximum voltage in volts of the resultant? Okay, the problem now needs the resultant in terms of maximum value so we do not need to convert it to rms okay now this is the uh, uh, given the maximum values you have the first maximum value 120 the second value is 80 volts and the angle between is uh, 40 degree okay now, to understand this further, we need to draw now the phasor diagram in terms of the voltage relationship. Now, this is the phasor diagram. As you can see here, first you have your maximum value of 120 volt for EM1. And then you have the uh, uh, EM2 for 80 volt. And these two um, voltages separated by a 40 degree angle. Our main goal is to get the resultant of EM1 and EM2 respectively. So how you will do that? We'll do a little bit of trigonometry here. But again, you can use the envelope diagram to solve this. If you have your EM here and you have a parallel, you, know, you use a parallel line here. That's the same thing. So that is also your EM1 having a 120 volt magnitude. If this is your EM here at the bottom side and you have a parallel line again here, that is your EM2. Here, same thing. They are the same. And then get the resultant having this envelope here. Okay? And that is the resultant of ER, which is the requirement of the problem. Now, it's very obvious that we can use here a triangle wherein all of the parameters is already given. Okay, so. Okay, we can isolate that. 
such a way that this is your EM1 as a value of 120. You have EM2 as a value of 80 volt. Okay, and this is your ER. Now, you can get that angle here in this triangle, okay, by having, okay, a 180 degree half of the revolution here. And this 40 degrees the same with this one. So, to get that angle beta, 180 degree minus 40. And very obvious, this is this angle, which is 140 degree. Now, this is already a look spam to you because we can use the cosine law to get the value of ER. So, again, by cosine law, you have ER squared, the opposite of the 140 degree uh, angle. EM1 squared, EM2 squared minus twice of EM1 and EM2 multiplied by cosine beta, which is cosine 140 degree. Now, substitute all of the values and you can now get the resultant voltage on the problem which is equal to 188.44 volt so this problem uh, you thought it is impossible to to solve but with the aid of phasor diagrams as i have mentioned on the basic fundamentals or module of this lesson you can solve this kind of problems now we can go further to problem number four Good day to all of you. So today we will uh, continue our discussion on uh, problem solving on series parallel RL, RC, and RLC circuits. So we are in problem number four. So I need to read it first before solving. Problem number four. A certain coil has an impedance of 20 ohms when injected by a 50 hertz uh, source AC signal. And then another 30 hertz at 60 hertz signal so what is the inductance of this coil now it means okay this is the solution it means that our inductance on the coil is constant as well as the r it means r and l is a coil wherein uh, we need to solve the value of l now to solve this one we need to go back to our main equation no, from the previous slide but we make use of this as magnitude only okay we can get the magnitude only so you have r squared plus x l squared but xl is omega l so it means omega uh, depends on the value of the frequency so when you say omega 60 you have 377 and excuse me omega 50 as 314 so, what you will do is to substitute the value of R and Z respectively. Please take note that the 20 ohm resistance at ah, 20 ohm and 30 ohms at the inputs are your total impedance. So, you have your R squared here, then 377 squared based on the 60 hertz, and then 314 L squared based on the 50 hertz. Now, you have equations 1 and 2, then we can subtract, subtract rather, so that we can eliminate the resistance here and considering only one parameter which is your L. Okay, this will be you know, the uh, result 330 squared minus 20 squared 377 L squared minus 314 L squared. Now you can now get L squared here and using a little bit of algebra our answer is 107 Henry or 107 milli Henry. A very very simple problem. So we can now go further to problem 5. Hello once again. Let us uh, solve our last problem on series parallel RL, RC, and RLC circuits. So we are on problem number 5. So let us uh, read the problem first. A 40 microfarad capacitor, 100 milli Henry inductance, and a 40 ohm resistor are connected in parallel and they are injected or connected across a 230 volt 60 hertz source the question is what is the total current of the combination okay uh, from our previous problems we have series connections now we have here an rlc connection and our main goal is to get total current so this is one application of the uh, parallel formula in terms of current which is we will uh, recall later or simply k 
Okay, this formula here, okay, which is IT squared equals to IR squared plus IC minus IL squared. Now, our main objective now is to get these values in terms of magnitude in order to get the total current at the source. Now, what I've done here is I draw the RLC in parallel and it's very obvious that our frequency is 60 hertz. So, go back to the basic uh, formula for XL, that is WL, and W for 60 hertz is uh, 377 multiplied by 100 milli, you have 37.7 ohms, and then you have XC, 1 all over omega C, or 1 all over 377 times 40 microfarad, the answer is 66.3 ohms. So, to get the current at R, L, and C, so this is your R, this is your L, and this is your C, to get the current, and they're connected in parallel, so we already know that the voltage here is constant. All you have to do is using Ohm's law, by dividing 230 by the corresponding uh, resistance or reactance, you can get the current. So, 230 over 40 is 5.75 amperes. For IL, you have voltage all over XL, which is 6.1 amperes. For IC, you have V230 over XC, which is 66.3. The answer is 3.47. Now, since we have all of these values, all you have to do is to substitute here. And we know this uh, equation here is magnitude alone, which is based on the PACER diagram. So, all you have to do is to substitute it here. And by the way, you can have this one, the squared here, and it will have a square root at the other side so that you can get IT. So substitute IR, IC, and IL in this equation and we can have this value of 6.322 amperes. So to those uh, who are new, you can have these problems on the uh, uh, description page or description link and there are some links there on the description and those links can lead you to these problems and some supplementary problems and we can and you can review the supplementary lectures on uh, on series parallel rl rc and rc and other videos that i already made and if you have some questions please do so you can comment me at the comment box section for your queries thank you very much and see you on our next lesson Ciao.